Welcome to another edition of Fisher Sports Desk. I'm James Bailey, joined tonight by Lydia Spiata. We have tons of highlights in tonight's show spanning field hockey, volleyball, and our Fisher football team. We will begin with football in this past weekend's homecoming game against Salisbury. Here's Kyle Lumsden with the highlights. It was alumni weekend at St. John Fisher College as the fans were excited and ready to go just before kickoff. Visiting Salisbury had all the momentum early, already leading 10-7 when quarterback John Dunbar found wide receiver Max Ersham downfield for the score, putting the Seagulls up 17-7. Fisher would answer with Tyler Fenty completing this 27-yard touchdown pass to Mike Colicio to cut the deficit to three at the half, 17-14. In the third quarter, it was again Dunbar this time using his legs as he would rush for this 19-yard touchdown, giving the Seagulls a 24-14 lead. The Cardinals wouldn't go away as Nathan Nagolian would catch this jump ball in the end zone for the touchdown, pumping up the hometown crowd. Fisher would take the lead off this play-action pass from Fenty, finding Calicio again, giving the Cardinals a 28-24 lead with 14 minutes left in the game. After a Fisher field goal, Salisbury down a touchdown with under six minutes to play, marched downfield, and it was Dunbar yet again scoring the tying touchdown, putting this game into overtime. Fisher, after losing the toss, started with the ball and was unable to score a touchdown, having to settle for a field goal. This set up Salisbury with a chance to win with a touchdown, and they did just that as running back J.D. Hook scampered up the middle and into the end zone, giving the Seagulls the upset victory 37-34. to Fisher will return to action this Saturday as they host Hartwick College. Moving on to field hockey, the 6-3 Lady Cardinals look to stay undefeated in conference play this Saturday as they took on Houghton College. Let's check in and see how they did. Both teams started out slow as neither offense could get anything going. Here's Kaylin Allen with a shot on goal as she comes up short. On the penalty corner, Liz Kusek gets another chance to score, but would come up short as well off a great pass from Marissa Vidala. The game was tied at zero going into halftime, but right out of the gates of the second half, Fisher star Stacey Skidmore puts in a great fast break goal to put the Cardinals up 1-0. Fisher then gets her offense going as Vidala and Zakala both have great looks, but are stuffed by Houghton goalie Elizabeth Pisker. The lead would never be tarnished as Skidmore then adds on another goal for Fisher to bring the lead up to two. Kusak added two more goals on top of that as Fisher rolls over Houghton with a final score 4-0. Fisher improved to 7-3 on the season. When we return, we'll bring you some volleyball highlights. We'll also have an exclusive interview with Executive Vice President of the College, Jared Rooney, so stay tuned. Big dreams and good grades aren't enough to get into college. There are actual steps you need to take. Finding someone who can help is the first and most important. For the next steps, go to knowhowtogo.org. Welcome back to Fisher Sports Desk. We're now switch gears in the volleyball. The Cardinals are trying to snap a losing streak in a match against Madai. St. John Fisher's volleyball team pulled off a huge comeback on September 24th against Madai College. The Fisher Lady Cardinals fell behind quickly as the Madai Mavericks took control of the first set, winning 25-19. However, the Cardinals proved resilient and were able to power back and win the next three sets. The Cardinals' defense also proved strong with contributions by Katie Mazursky and Jordan DiMartino leading the team with 17 and 16 digs respectively. Aaron Crandall and Madison Carwas also contributed with 12 each. Carwas led the team in kills, as well as adding to the Cardinals' stellar performance. Fisher moved to 6-10 on the season with the win. Fisher went 2-1 the following weekend and looked to keep the momentum going against crosstown rival Naz. 
Freshman Madison Carlos had a big game for Fisher, here showing off one of her team leading 21 kills. Fellow freshman Amanda Miller would also contribute with this impressive kill in the second game. Later on in the third game, Miller and Brooke Meter would then combine for a Fisher block. However, Naz, led by senior Maria Alaco, would prevail with the victory three games to two. Fisher went 1-1 one one this past weekend, putting them at 9-13 in the season. They play again at Houghton College on the 8th. Earlier this week, CTV's Kyle Lumpson caught up with the Executive Vice President of the College, Dr. Jared Rooney, for an interview on the school's athletic facilities. Let's kick it to Kyle. Dr. Rooney, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kyle. It's good to be with you. So can you describe to me and the viewers out there, what are your everyday activities and your job that entails here at Fisher? Sure. I enjoy my job because it entails something different most days. Yeah. Uh, my main responsibilities are in the area of enrollment, advancement, and planning. So on the enrollment side, obviously, there's admissions and financial aid when you came in as a Perspective right. student when looking at my, Fisher. My when we got your application. Yeah, application yeah. Uh, so those are exciting times. So we receive prospective students and families. Uh, oversee the undergraduate and graduate. Fisher now offers baccalaureate through doctoral degrees. So we have both undergraduate and graduate admissions. Financial aid is a big part of people's decisions to attend college. So we oversee that area as well. Nice. Marketing and communications is another area that I'm responsible for. And then on the other side. Uh, alumni relations and development. So I have the chance to talk to graduates of Fisher. Oh, yeah. Many times people who are in a position to support the college uh, make gifts to the college either for scholarships or facilities mm -hmm. that we need. So it's really a little bit of everything, bit of everything. and something different each day. Uh, that sounds awesome. And uh, speaking of those facilities, I've noticed that there have been a number of uh, renovations and new constructions going on. Can you uh, Talk a little bit about those new renovations. Sure. The college, as part of its strategic planning process, identified a few building initiatives that were important to sustain the momentum that the college has enjoyed, and also to add facilities where they were needed for areas of growth mm -hmm. or to enable us to grow into areas where enrollments had gotten very strong. So we have a Building for the Future initiative that's currently underway. One of the big buildings is the Integrated Science and Health Sciences Building. So that's what yeah. you see when you first come right, onto yeah. the campus. And that's really the result of our need to add additional laboratories in the natural sciences, chemistry, and biology primarily. Also, the pharmacy program has grown through the years. So mm -hmm. there will be rooms on the first floor of that new facility to expand the pharmacy program a little bit. That's awesome. On the athletic side, we've seen great growth too, as you're probably familiar. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, the Student, Student Life Center, Center, which is now the Ralph Wilson Athletic Center, right. has the need to really see some renovations as well. So there are really f three phases to that development. The first is the addition of uh, a coaching wing. So we've and put all beautiful. of the coaches together. Yeah. Uh, you know, many of our prospective students, perhaps yourself when you were looking at Fisher, came to your interest in the college through the athletic program. I did. Yeah. So when you come to the campus, the first person that you might see might be one of our athletic coaches. So you'd go naturally to the athletic center. So we wanted to have a nice, beautiful place of welcome where mm -hmm. the coaches could be together that would make a favorable impression for student athletes and their families. So we renovated one space and then we added about 5,000 square feet to create the beautiful okay. wing that's there today. So that's open and seems to be functioning very yeah, well. It, it, looks it looks really great. It yeah, really, and yeah, the coaches nice. have reported that it's really been a nice place to, uh, to work in. Right. So that's been a great first step. We've taken a couple of racquetball courts a few years ago and we made them in the fitness areas. The racquetball courts weren't being utilized as much today as they were in years past. So that space we made into a fitness area two years ago. It has been well utilized, and it in has, fact, so well utilized that we've taken two more racquetball courts, so we've expanded that space. Mm -hmm. So actually next month, in the early part of November, we'll open up an expanded fitness center. And so a lot of students are really looking forward to, to seeing that. That's, yeah. that's, they, they walk by it, and they go to work out, and they see the renovations being done, and they, all I, all they, they keep asking me, because I work at, down at the uh, Student Life Center, like, when is this going to get done? When can I, when can I you know, go up there and, and try this out? So they're really yeah. looking so forward to it. So probably you can tell them by the middle of November. Perfect. And then right down beyond the, f the uh, fitness courts there, we're building locker rooms for the public's use. So students, yeah. employees who utilize the fitness facilities. And those used to be old classrooms? They were classrooms, yes. right. So the classrooms have now moved up right off the lobby, more at the start of that 
coach's wing okay. when you come into the building. So that will all be open in the middle of November, so that'll be a great new addition, fitness opportunities for our students, uh, employees, uh, and, so and really that'll be a great new space for everyone to take advantage of. That's true. And so now that you've moved um, you know, the, the locker rooms for the everyday student type mm -hmm. thing that they can change, what will you be doing to the other locker rooms that were used for the faculty or the students here? back in the other wing. Yeah, great question. What we're trying to do is ultimately get each of our intercollegiate teams a space that they might consider a team space. So we're going to go back in and renovate some of those locker room facilities with an eye toward creating individual team spaces. So that work will take place probably over the next year or so. Mm -hmm. Then the final aspect of the renovation in the athletic center itself will be the expansion and renovation of the lobby. So when you first come into the building, we're going to expand the uh, front doorways back out to expand it a little bit more, make some more room there. We're going to create a central circulation desk in there too. A lot of people use the Student Life Center. That's true. Yeah. And we want to make sure that the people coming into the building, that we know who they are, that mm -hmm. they are supposed to be there. And safety. So we're going to have, yeah. just from a safety and security, from an access standpoint, a central yeah. desk there. Then we're also looking to create a sense of tradition and uh, we're going to move the Hall of Fame from the rear hallways. It's, today it's over by the football locker rooms. Mm -hmm. We're going to move that out into that center area. So oh, we're going nice. to bring out the Hall of Fame and really celebrate more the tradition of success that Fisher Athletics has seen through the years. And they've done so, a, lot, a lot of success. A lot of success. Years, so it's uh, good to honor those. In the, it the is. People, the guests can come and see that. And they, you know, it's, when you walk right in, maybe those prospective students that come and be like, I want my name or I want to see my face on that wall. Yeah, it really is an inspiration to people, yeah. I think, Kyle. So uh, our hope is to bring it out, show people, showcase the Fisher Athletic success, and to really incorporate some sense of the history and tradition of Fisher Athletics, which has really grown into a terrific intercollegiate yes. Division Three athletic program. It has. And you know, I guess you could move on into saying now specialize into the Fisher football program. Yeah. You've seen the success grow over the years. How does that really impact the college or from your standpoint that you've seen? Oh, it, it significantly and uh, very positively from my view. I came to the college in 1996, so at the time there was no Growney Stadium. So uh, for you to think back to a time like that, you would, you know, uh, not understand I loved understand it too it. when I first showed up and right. not seeing that would be totally different. Right, it was. So I remember that when I first got here, uh, I had a son who later went on to graduate from Fisher. Actually, he played soccer here. Uh, in Grounty Stadium, so he benefited from him, and he was in about second or third grade when we built the stadium. And remember him looking and saying, "Wow, this is really." I want to play. Yeah, here. I want to yeah, play yeah. here. You know, so it really, I think, motivates the young people who come to the Bills camp in the summer or who come to Fisher football games from the community. So the coaching staff has always been terrific. Coach Vosberg has always been a first-rate coach. He's a great guy. You know, cares very much about the students that we. Uh, recruit and that play for him. So we've always had good people, and I think when you combine good people with great facilities, you really have the type of success that we've been able to see at Fisher. Definitely. Well, I want to thank you for coming here on the, onto the show. And when you build great facilities, you know, the more the people will come. And it's it's what you've done here has been phenomenal. It's really uh, feels like home when you show up, and it's it's a, it's a nice facility, it's a nice place to be. Yeah. So and congratulations you. to you, Kyle, on the success of this show. I've enjoyed watching thank it, you. and I. Uh, credit you with getting it done in your senior year so congratulations well, and continued success thank you very much mm -hmm. put in a lot of hard work and i just hope that the viewers can enjoy it because it's uh, it's fun to, to be, fun to be a part of especially yeah. the program and see it grow so yeah thank you good luck when we get back we're talking preseason nba predictions the round table is next so stay with us personal foul inactive activities on a glorious day huh let's get out there and play <laughs> Freeze! When do I get to be in? Uh-oh. Hey, Reggie, frozen people can't talk. P-L-A-Y! An hour a day. I'm in. There are lots of great play ideas online, but don't stay too long. Welcome back to Fisher Sports Desk. We're here with our roundtable talking the NBA. I'm joined by Kyrie Demos and Jake Tinker. And we'll start with Kyrie. Who do you think is sleeper team in the NBA is this year? 
Um, well, I think it's the Charlotte Hornets. They've got some great players with Kemba Walker and Al Jefferson. They made some great additions in the offseason with Lance Stevenson drafting Noah Vonley, um, P.J. Harrison as well, coming off the bench, a good, great scorer. So I think they're going to be a, a significantly better team in the Eastern Conference. My sleeper pick, obviously, has to be the Brooklyn Nets. Coming into the season, new head coach that's going to instill defense in this team. Brooke Lopez coming back. He can average 20 points plus for this team, bringing a desperate all-star center to the team. Yeah, I think the New York Knicks, um, I like what they did bringing back Carmelo. Uh, they have a great front office now with Phil Jackson. Uh, I know they have a rookie head coach in Derek Fisher, but I think that he'll take on the Jackson system well. And the supporting cast, you know, they got the shooters in J.R. Smith and Tim Hardaway Jr. They have uh, the big men in Damari Sotomayor and Samuel Dallin Bear. They'll definitely hold down the middle. And uh, they have the distributor in Jose Calderon that Melo really needs. So I think that's definitely good for them. Uh, we'll start off with Jake this time. Who do you think the MVP of the, season, of the uh, NBA will be this year? I'm going to actually start with a shocker for this one. I have Kyrie Irving of the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think he finally has what he needs to go back to being an MVP. He's got an all-star in LeBron. He's got a big man in Kevin Love who can stretch the floor. Mm. He has guys like Ray Allen and Mike Miller to come off the bench and stretch the floor for him. So look for him to get out and run Le LeBron this year and increase his points and his assist. Kerry? Um, I'm going to stick with the point guard position here, and I'm going to go with CP3 in uh, L.A. Um, Chris Paul has been arguably the best point guard in the NBA throughout his time in the NBA, and I think the supporting cast that he has around him with Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, adding a player like Spencer Hawes, a, sc a scorer off the bench at the big man position, he's got a great – team around him and it's going to only make his, his play that much better so I think he can win the MVP this year yeah I think there are a lot of there are a lot of candidates for MVP this year uh, you know I think Derek Rose coming back he could be definitely a candidate I agree with Chris Paul um, LeBron obviously back on the cast but I like Kevin Durant um, second year in a row obviously you know it's easy to pick the, the reigning champ but I really like him I think that he's definitely he's still peaking I still think that he's still got tons left in the tank He's still very young. Got a great supporting cast around him with Russell Westbrook. He's got Jeremy Lamb. You know they got they have a lot of pieces where he doesn't have to necessarily be the guy, but um, at the same time, if that opens it up for him, he could definitely take over. So I definitely like that. And finally, we're gonna go with the finals. Um, Kyrie, we'll start with you. Uh, who do you think is going into the finals, and who do you think is gonna come out? Um, well, I think in the conference championship games, I think it'll be clearly Cleveland and Chicago in the East. Two best teams. Um, you know, you got the best players in LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Love in Cleveland, and Derrick Rose, and Jakeem Noah, and um, Paul Gasol in Chicago. They clearly are the two best teams. So, But I think Cleveland, of those two teams, will make it to the finals. And in the Western Conference, I've got OKC in L.A., the Clippers, not the Lakers, um, in the conference championship game out there. Um, but I think KD and Russell Westbrook get over the hump, get back to the finals, and... I'm going to go out on a limb here and pick the OKC Thunder over the Cleveland Cavaliers. KD gets, gets his ring over LeBron. So, I would have to agree with you. I, um, I, and, and I have the same finals, I believe, in the East. Um, it would be great to see, have a Heat and Cavs semifinal. I also think that, that the other semifinal could be the Bulls and the Nets of the Knicks. Um, but I ultimately think out of all those teams, the Bulls will come out of the East. I think they have the, most, I think they have the strongest lineup, and I think the East is pretty weak this year. The West is always a toss-up. Uh, we got Thunder and Spurs, uh, and I think the Clippers and the Rockets. We got there's so many good teams out there, uh, especially with the defending champs and the Spurs. They never go down. But I agree with you that I think that the Thunder will come out, and I think that Chicago and OKC will be a great finals. Um, but I agree that I think that that, OK, that Oklahoma City has more star power. I think that they will take it over. I think that they'll they'll ultimately win the finals this year, Jake. Well, for my picks, I am going to say that. The Cavs, I agree with you guys, are going to make it to the conference, but they're going to have a tough matchup coming from the Toronto Raptors. You're talking about a young team here, made it to the playoffs last year. I think they can make a run. Kyle Lowry is starting to play like a leader. They believe in Toronto, but ultimately LeBron's experience is going to trump them. Heading out west, you're going to have another star-studded matchup. You're going to have the young OKC Thunder, and the veteran Spurs, but ultimately the Spurs are going to go back to the finals for the third straight year. And when you talk about it, the Spurs have been winning for a long time. 
So ultimately, that's going to lean the matchup in their favorite. So I think the Spurs defend their title this year. Well, that's great. We'll have to see how that all pans out as the NBA season goes on. Well, that's all the time we have tonight on Fisher Sports Desk. Thanks for joining us. Stay classy, St. John Fisher.